The nearer she approached the shrub, the more attractive it looked until she came quite close to it. And then, although its beauty was richer than words can tell, she hardly knew whether to like it or not. It bore above a hundred flowers of the most brilliant hues and each different from the others, but all having a kind of resemblance among themselves, which showed them to be sister blossoms. But there was a deep, glossy luster on the leaves of the shrub and on the petals of the flowers that made Persephone doubt whether they might not be poisonous. To tell you the truth, foolish as it may seem, she was half inclined to turn around and run away. What a silly child I am, thought she, taking courage. It is really the most beautiful shrub that ever sprang out of the earth. I will pull it up by the roots and carry it home and plant it in my mother's garden. Holding up her apron full of flowers with her left hand, Persephone seized the large shrub with the other and pulled and pulled, but was hardly able to loosen the soil about its roots. What a deep-rooted plant it was. Again, the girl pulled with all her might and observed that the earth began to stir and crack to some distance around the stem. She gave another pull, but relaxed her hold, fancying that there was a rumbling sound right beneath her feet. Did the roots extend down into some enchanted cavern? Then, laughing at herself for so childish a notion, she made another effort. Up came the shrub, and Persephone staggered back, holding the stem triumphantly in her hand and gazing at the deep hole which its roots had left in the soil. Much to her astonishment, this hole kept spreading wider and wider and growing deeper and deeper until it really seemed to have no bottom. And all the while, there came a rumbling noise out of its depths, louder and louder and nearer and nearer and sounding like the tramp of horses' hooves and the rattling of wheels. Too much frightened to run away, she stood straining her eyes into this wonderful cavity and soon saw a team of four sable horses snorting smoke out of their nostrils and tearing their way out of the earth with a splendid golden chariot whirling at their heels. They leaped out of the bottomless hole, chariot and all, and there they were, tossing their black manes, flourishing their black tails, and curvetting with every one of their hooves off the ground at once, close by the spot where Persephone stood. In the chariot sat the figure of a man richly dressed, with a crown on his head all flaming with diamonds. He was of a noble aspect and rather handsome, but looked sullen and discontented, and he kept rubbing his eyes and shading them with his hand as if he did not live enough in the sunshine to be very fond of its light. As soon as this personage saw the affrighted Persephone, he beckoned her to come a little nearer. Do not be afraid, said he, with as cheerful a smile as he knew how to put on. Come, will not you like to ride a little way with me in my beautiful chariot? But Persephone was so alarmed that she wished for nothing but to get out of his reach, and no wonder. The stranger did not look remarkably good-natured in spite of his smile, and as for his voice, its tones were deep and stern and sounded as much like the rumbling of an earthquake underground as anything else. And as is always the case with children in trouble, Persephone's first thought was to call for her mother. Mother, Mother Ceres, cried she, all in a tremble. Come quickly and save me but her voice was too faint for her mother to hear. Indeed, it is most probable that Ceres was a thousand miles off, making the corn grow in some far distant country. Nor could it have availed her poor daughter, even had she been within hearing, for no sooner did Persephone begin to cry out than the stranger leaped to the ground, caught the child under his arms, and again mounted the chariot, shook the reins, and shouted to the four black horses to set off. They immediately broke into so swift a gallop that it seemed rather like flying through the air than running along the ground. In a moment, Persephone lost sight of the pleasant vale of Enna and in which she had always dwelt. Another instant, and even the summit of Mount Etna had become so blue in the distance 
that she could scarcely distinguish it from the smoke that gushed out of its crater. But still, the poor child screamed and scattered her apron full of flowers along the way and left a long cry trailing behind the chariot. And many mothers to whose ears it came ran quickly to see if any mischief had befallen their children. But Mother Ceres was a great way off and could not hear the cry. And I think we'll pause here and continue with this story in the next video. In the meantime, thanks so much for listening. Please like, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment down below. I love you guys. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now.